beautiful people of YouTube. It is Casey. Thank you guys so much for coming back to my channel. And today's video is all is going to be about all the things I wish I would have known before I started teaching. So in this video, you're going to learn 10 things that I wish I would have known. So if you're interested, stay tuned. And if it's your first time joining this channel, please make sure to subscribe to get all the updates on fun educational finds and even lifestyle information. So let's go ahead and get started. that I wish I would have known. Now I'm gonna give you 10 fun facts, but I'm also gonna be giving you some different resources and things like that that you can purchase that are gonna help make your transition from being a college student to a teacher or from whatever profession that you come from, an easier transition. These, ad, these products are not sponsored in any way by anyone. I just truly believe in them and that's why I wanted to share them with you first. All right, so let's go ahead and get started in the content. Number one, Stress is totally situational. I can't tell you how much that is so true. Stress in your life as a teacher is merely situational. It can be so many different things and so many different ways that people are pulling you to cause different kinds of stress. One of the ways that I know can be even like can cause so much stress is whenever there's a situation, maybe you have a student that's angry, maybe there's a parent that's upset and you get really stressed out about it, please know that this too shall pass and this is just merely situational. Things are gonna get better and this is not going well for you today, but tomorrow is a new day and that child may not have the same issues that they had the day before. So make sure you remember that whenever you're trying to deal with your stress as a teacher. Another way that I like to deal with stress is through using essential oils and things like that. So if you are an essential oils fan, then I encourage you to check out some of the links that I have listed down in the description bar on some of the essential oils that I use and the diffuser that I use that helps me calm down and be more relaxed. Another way Sorry, I had to fix my lights a little bit. I didn't feel like it was going as good. Hey, did, can you tell I'm in a new place? So I have a studio slash office now that I am so excited to bring these YouTube videos to you from. So welcome to my new office. I'll give an office tour whenever it looks good. Right now it's not, you know, it doesn't look great. Okay, the next thing that I wanna tell you, one of the things that I wish I would've known when I was beginning my teaching journey was don't sweat the small stuff. I can't tell you how many times I see new teachers coming in and they're stressed out about attendance. They're stressed out because so-and-so was talking to so-and-so while they were doing the Pledge of Allegiance. And I can't tell you, like, don't stress it. Those kinds of things are things that are out of our control that are not that big of a deal. So even though you miss attendance today, because it's gonna happen, there's gonna come a time, if you're anything like me, where you're gonna miss attendance for one situation. Don't worry about it. Don't sweat the small stuff. You have so many other things to worry about as a teacher that stressing out about just something so minor can really upset your entire day and your entire mood. So don't stress the small stuff. One way that I work at not stressing about out about small things is by working out. I love working out. Okay, let me, let me stop right there. I like working out and sometimes I love it, but it normally goes like, oh, I don't wanna work out. Oh my God, I gotta work out. And then while I'm working out, I'm like, I hate my life, I don't wanna work out. And then when I'm finished, I'm like, I'm amazing. I am just sweating gold right now. And you know, that's kind of how my workout journey goes. But it really helps me honestly de-stress. I swear I'm a better person when I work out, like hands down. I'm a better person, I'm a better wife, better mom, all those good things, okay? So work out, it's good for you. You have 25 minutes a day to work out. Get off that Facebook feed, stop scrolling through Instagram, get off your booty and get to working because you are gonna feel, there are, I am 110% a believer of mind, body, and spirit. You cannot be the best you that you need to be when those things are not all like combined together. Mind, body, and spirit. So you need to work on fixing your mind, use books to do that, take some time for you, body, exercise, and then spirits, your spiritual growth, your spiritual journey, whatever it may be, you need to work on it because once you have all three of those things connected, you are unstoppable. All right, let's keep going. Number three, grade immediately. I wish I would have had like the knowledge about grading that I have now. You need to grade as soon as you can grade, folks, because if you wait, you're gonna be stressed out and you're gonna be overloaded. You're gonna take papers home on the weekend. It ain't nobody got time for that. You have a life. You are not just a teacher. I don't care if you 
you're not married. I don't care if you're 18. You are not just a teacher. That's just one part of you. That's not your entire being. So please grade your papers. The second they come on your desk, just sit there and go as fast as you can. You can use some of the products I'm gonna talk about, like an easy grader, which is from like 1900, and it's amazing. You can use one of those, or you can do a little bit more new age approach, use Google Classroom, and use the add-on Flocabulary. I'm just kidding. Use the add-on Fluberoo. If you're not using Fluberoo, then I don't really know what planet you live on. Fluberoo is the next generation, folks. Fluberoo, if you want to sponsor a video, I got you. Like, I know all about the ins and outs of Fluberoo, and I feel like I can own it. So, shout out to Fluberoo. I'm here if you need me. All right, number four. I need to listen to this advice. I don't always do this, but I need to. Don't talk all day. I spit when I said that. Don't talk all day. Our job is to be a teacher. Teachers are not always talking. Sometimes the teachers need to listen. Students learn best often when they teach each other. Nobody wants to hear you talking all day long. So stop talking so much. Don't lecture, let the children get involved in their learning. I know that for some of you, if you have a personality like mine, you feel like you're just losing control when you're not able to talk to your students as much as you feel like you need to because they're not learning. I promise you when I backed off of talking so much, my students learned way more. And on the situation of talking, let's talk about some things that I've helped to make me shut up. One of them is a Miracle Cube timer. I'm sitting there running my mouth. I know the kids have a little bit of independent work they need to do, but it drives me crazy when they're working independently. I'm like, let's talk. Let's do something. I don't feel like we're learning. So I have a Miracle Cube timer. Timer has different times on the sides, and you can turn it on its side, and it starts the timer. I won't say a word during that few minutes because that's time where students are needing to learn for themselves. Another thing that I have seen lots of teachers use un just recently is like a fun little karaoke classroom microphone, and that's a fun way to have students involved and engaged in their learning, and I'll link that down in the description bar as well. All right, number five, relationships matter more than your teaching. Mic drop. I have always believed that and I never would say it because I was so afraid that people were gonna judge me and judge my teaching abilities based on that statement, but I'll say it now and I will forever say it. Relationships mean more than your teaching. Students who believe that you love them, you care about them, you're passionate about what you do, will listen to you undoubtedly. You can teach half as good and build amazing relationships and your students will perform as best as they can because they love you. I believe that 110%. I am not the best teacher in the world. There are times where I am not sure that if I am getting my point across, there are times where I feel like I have not done what I am supposed to do as a teacher. But let me tell you, I build those relationships and I love the heck out of those students. And when it comes down to it, my students perform the best that they can perform because we love each other. When people love each other, they tend to do, they go over and above and beyond and they try exponentially. So I believe it 110% and it's just taken me seven years to say it, but relationships mean more than your teaching. And if you don't agree with me, listen, I get it. It's fine. We all have opinions, but I can tell you from experience, that's how it works in my classroom. I still teach like crazy folks. I'm not, not a teacher, but I do work on building those relationships. All right, number six, real love. I get this is so, this is so bad for me to say. Real world experiences really connect learning together. That's a tongue twister, but it's true. Real world experiences really put the pieces of the learning puzzle together. You need to connect to your children on a level that they get. I don't care if it's through Snapchat or Instagram. I don't care if you're finding out what their favorite sport is. Whatever it is, find out what they like and you need to cater to it. So whatever your lesson is on, go ahead, take a step back, and if it's just about something you like, then scratch it. What you like doesn't matter. It's about what the kids like. One way that I always encourage to do this, I talked about it in my Amazon Echo video, but it's using Alexa in the classroom. If you'll go check that video out, I'll put the link down below as well. And it just talks about how you can make connections with students 
immediately right before they walk in the door. What was the game of the, what was the score of the Cavaliers game? Or what was the score, my child would kill me if I said that. What was the score of the Golden State game last night? Build those relationships, make real world connections with your students, and learning will take off. All right, we are on, oh, another way that I love to do that is ask students to bring pictures in of themselves. And I have a digital photo frame, and I'm gonna link it down. I can't remember, it's Nick's advanced photo frame. So they bring in pictures of themselves, right? All right, and then it's like a motion sensor, so it changes to a different picture if a student walks by it. I have it on my back wall, and students can bring their own experiences, their own real life situations, and we can use those in the lesson. So that's a great way to A, build relationships, and B, bring in those real world experiences. Let's get going, folks. Number seven. Bring your lunch and create a routine when it comes to eating. This is crazy. It sounds so simple because you're a new teacher, la la la. Telling you folks, when I started teaching, I ate breakfast and lunch at school. Nothing against school lunches, but I started gaining weight like a lot because I was over there eating like chicken nuggets and honey mustard and some rolls and all that kind of stuff. And I'm telling you, bring your lunch, figure out, plan out what you're gonna make for the week, Go ahead, if you're like a Sunday meal prep kind of gal or boy, go you. I am not. I have to either prepare it the night before or prepare it the morning of. If you haven't seen my video on like the first day of school, I kind of go through what I do. But I make egg white, an egg white omelet every morning and then I make a salad Monday through Thursday and I also have tuna Monday through Thursday, which some people don't like and that's okay and I'm not judging you. But... That is something that's important to me and my life goes so much better when I have a routine. Now some of you can't eat the same thing every day and I mean, go for a lean cuisine. Go for something quick. You don't have to always make a sandwich or anything like that, but just, yeah, do it. I have got, we're, hold on. I'm gonna show you guys my new lunchbox holder. Okay, so what I carry my lunches in, look at this cuteness. Oh, look, it has my name on it. From Erin Condren. You all know that I am obsessed with Erin Condren and her planners and her all her good stuff. I'm not being sponsored, Erin, but you know, if you need me, your girl's here. So this is my little lunchbox carrier and, oh, hold on. And it matches my planner. Stop it. I swore I would never be that chick that had to have matching things and had monograms, but you know what? Here I am, just living it up. Here's my planner, got my name on it. Here's my lunch tote, got my name on it. I don't even care. I like this me. You know, it is what it is. So that's a good thing. And then, so I keep saying so. Ugh. If you're into like compartmentalizing your lunch, then I did chat about a Bentology lunchbox, which is mostly for kids, but they have crazy, amazing compartments for lunches. Me, I'm not a compartmentalizing kind of girl with my lunch. I am with my kids, but anyways, Erin Condren, I will link her stuff down in the description below. I did say I wasn't being sponsored, but I will tell you with that link, if you end up buying anything, then that is like an affiliate link for me, but if you wanna use it, use it. If you don't, don't. Okay, the next thing that I wanna chat about is you need a good carrying bag. If you have like a forever walk like I do, you need a backpack that's gonna be able to get you where you're going. I've had a few different versions of backpacks and I've not fallen in love with any of them, except this brand new, beautiful, I feel like we need a drum roll. Look at this beautiful child. Oh my gosh, I can't even, I can't even right now. I had a student that walked in with this on the first day. I was like, little girl, where did you get that book bag? I'm gonna need you one. And I bought it. I said, we're gonna be twinsies the rest of the year. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. Look at this cute book bag from, yes, old school Vera Bradley. The coolest part is if you travel, you can put this on your suitcase when you roll it. There is a laptop holder. There is a headphones holder. So if you have your phone in here, you can pull your headphones through. There are, the front of this bad boy, I can't, like how hilarious is this me holding this like this right now? Okay, I'm sweating. And there are all kinds of little compartments in here for your pins, your ID, and you know a girl had to get a matching wallet. So I got a matching wallet to go with it. I don't know if it's in here. It might be in my car. Let me show you something else I like from Erin Condren. This is totally not even scripted right now. This is like something for all of my little 
little treats that go in my planner. And I don't have all of them in there because I just got it, but um, these pens, done. Amazing. Okay. All right. Let me quit talking about my stuff. Fear Bradley. I like it. Okay. And then, number 10, make sure you're doing positive incentives for your children. Positive incentives make the world go round. Let me tell you about a conversation that I had with a student on the third day of school. Check this. So I had a student that did not know me, very, very rude, very disrespectful. You hear how I'm giving you lots of negative information right now about this child. So let's say that her name was Jane. Sorry, Aunt Jane. And she, so she's very sassy like most middle schoolers are and I asked her politely to move over or whatever I asked her to do, maybe get your head up and all this kind of stuff. And she turns around, she rolls her eyes, she looks me up and she looks me down because that's what girls do, we know, she's like. And then she proceeds to say something, you know, underneath her tongue. Now what I could have done was say, um, what are you saying? You can't talk to me like that. I could have been that way, but instead, Let's work on changing our mindset and fixing things in a positive way. So, you know what I did? Walked up to her, I said, I don't think we know each other. And she kind of backed off a little bit. And I said, I'm Miss Morris. And I stuck my hand out, I shook her hand, and I said, I think that we just didn't know each other and maybe we were kind of both being a little disrespectful, but I'm totally down with us pretending like that never happened and let's be like besties. She was like, yes ma'am. She didn't even know what to do. So I encourage you that if something bad happens, I had a student sleeping in my class today, and I was like, hey, um, let's say her name was Sally, that girl. And I was like, hey, Sally, are you sleeping? She's like, no, I was just looking at the back of my eyelids. I was like, dude, I totally get that. I do that all the time. And she just kind of like looked at me, and I was like, so could you look at the back of your eyelids and maybe while your head's up? And she was like, sure. And I said, okay, great. And just kind of walked on. So try to make things more positive. You can always find the negative in something. And when a student goes off the handle, it's so easy to just try to bark back and try to win that fight. But there's no fight to win. You're the teacher. You've already won. So be positive with your students. Give them a growth mindset. Change their attitude. Change their mind. Change their life. Change their learning. I truly believe that. With that said, let's talk about a student. This is not even, I, I can't, this is the cutest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. And she doesn't even know I'm doing this, but I have to. Um, I got a message on Teachers Pay Teachers the other day from somebody that says, can I please have your email address? So I gave, I gave her my email address and she emails me and she says, hey Casey, my name is Amaya. I won't give your last name out, but there's, and I am 11 years old. And I was like, what? And she talks about how she doesn't have any money, but she wants to be a teacher one day. And she wants to buy some of my TPT products, but she doesn't have any money. And she's not gonna ask for a gift card because that's just, you know, she's not gonna do that. But what she would love more than anything was for me to give her a shout out on my YouTube channel. So from a teacher that is so passionate about kids, Amaya girl, this one is for you. Thank you so much for messaging me and brightening my day. I did not respond the first 24 hours, so she emailed me again just to make sure that I got it. But whoa, like such a great, positive, amazing experience. And Amaya, if you'll message me your address, I will send you a thank you card in return. I am getting a new PO box as of right now. If you have anything you wanna send that's fun or exciting or educational that you want me to know about, you can send it to my PO box. It's just PO box 40, Douglas, Georgia 31533. You can find it down in the description box below. And I will be changing it, so make sure to check back because I'm getting a new PO box as of tomorrow. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been so much fun in my new studio. I hope you like my background. I hope you are excited about all of these 10 fun facts about what you should do before you start teaching. And I hope you enjoyed it. So if you need me, just let me know. Send me an email and I'll get back with you as soon as possible. If you're interested in following me on my Instagram, you can follow it right here. And if you're interested in following me and liking on Facebook, I would love to have you as a liker. And I would love to have you subscribe to this channel because you rock. I rock, we rock together, okay? Let's do this thing called education together. I love you guys and I will see you next week. Bye.